There is definitely life on other planets. In the big bad universe, or however many universes there are, there's gotta be someone else, not just us. Are you bringing me an alien? Something not from Earth? Do I have a clue? I come from a place visited by few. It has two faces unseen when new. Two faces unseen when new. That's a moon reference. Are we doing moon rocks today? I think we are. This is a lunar Brescia. Oh my gosh, this came from the moon. You know, I've actually never held a moon rock. This is a first, this is super cool. It's dark, it's smooth. So obviously there's not a whole lot of moon rock and jewelry. So I'm gonna bring in a friend here at JTV who is super knowledgeable. He's actually a geologist. And that's the best thing about JTV is that there are not only gemologists, but also geologists. Caleb is actually in his office, which is the lab here at JTV. And it's super cool. Okay, Caleb. So tell me a little bit about what I am actually looking at. So what you're looking at is a piece of the moon that crashed into Earth in the form of a meteorite. And how that happens is the moon gets impacts, and that's why you look up at the moon and you see craters. When those impacts happen, pieces of the moon can fly off, especially for larger impacts, and uh, get caught in the Earth's gravitational field and then crash down to Earth to where it is now uh, sitting in your hand. So tell us where these like moon rocks are found on Earth. Is it anywhere? Is it in certain locations? Technically, these impacts can happen anywhere. Certain areas are more prone to meteorites being found due to the environment. Like if, if a meteorite crashes into, say, a forest, it's going to be a lot more difficult to find than if it crashes into a desert or in Antarctica because you can fly over a desert or someplace like Antarctica and see where an impact has happened because you don't have all this vegetation in the way. I want you to tell us a little bit about where you are. I mentioned that you're in your office, but your office is not a normal office. It's a, it's a cool office. Sure, I'm in our advanced testing lab. This is where I spend a lot of my time. I have a lot of spectrometers around me that are used for analyzing materials and gemstones to figure out what they are, what, what kind of treatments may have been done to them, things like that. Cool. Okay, so I have another box. This is from Caleb's lab, and I believe there is a clue. Oh, and this says the light side of the moon, but this box isn't so light, Caleb. <laughs> this does not look like this. Two no. different, I'm guessing this is two different types of rock. So first question to you, when's the last time you looked at the moon? Mm, actually last night, I looked at the moon last night. It was really pretty last night. What did you see when you looked at the moon? Um, it wasn't a full moon. It just looked like a gray, ball in the sky. What you're holding there is essentially the same composition as the white part of the moon that you see. So when you look up at the oh. moon, you typically will see kind of a white area, which is known as the lunar highlands. And you see okay. a darker area, which is the lunar maria. The white part is actually the oldest part of the moon, whereas the black part is a younger area of the moon. Okay, so why is one the older part? Why is one the younger part? Can you explain that to me? Originally, the moon was molten at one point in time. And when it cooled, it's crust was made out of what you're holding, which is an orthocyte. Then as time went on, large impacts happened and caused a remelting of the crust into basalt, which is what the, the darker parts are. Okay, so I know that we have basalt on Earth. Do we have a orthocyte on Earth? Yes, the anorthocyte you're holding is actually from Earth. So this piece is actually from Earth. Yes, it is not a moon rock. It is essentially the same composition as a moon rock though. All right, so tell me a little bit about how the moon is formed. The current theory for lunar formation is actually a pretty crazy one. It's called the giant impact hypothesis. The idea is, so you have the early Earth, which is still molten, and while the Earth was still molten, you had around a Mars-sized object crash into the Earth. And when that impact happened, parts of both of those bodies got shot out into the orbits of the Earth and solidified into the moon. You basically have a ball of magma that is the newly forming moon. Okay. Imagine that as fairly homogenous. Everything is very well mixed together. So as it okay. cooled, the heavier elements tended to solidify first and sink toward the bottom because of their density and because of their chemistry. That is so stinking cool. I can't, I just like, Caleb, I'm just picturing like the moon as an ocean of magma and I just, it's... <laughs> 
Okay, so allegedly we have a science experiment. Is that right or is that right? Hopefully. It is right. We have a science experiment. <laughs> so we're gonna set that up. All right, Caleb, so why is it important for us to learn about the science experiment, which as you can see is set up in front of me. This experiment is basically gonna show you an example of magmatic differentiation. You're gonna mix all of those cups together and that's going to be your molten moon with all the elements mixed together and then you're gonna shake it and that will be the crystallization process of the moon. Okay, cool. So we're basically doing some pretty heavy geology today. Yes. <laughs> all right, so I have a funnel. We have some gravel. Those are actually aquarium gravels, but they're supposed to represent olivine and the moon's subsurface. A north site is gonna be straws. All right, tell us a little bit about pyroxene. Pyroxene is a very common oh, mineral. Oops. It's just a more mafic or dense mineral that's found in association with a lot of metamorphic and igneous rocks. Okay, and you said pyroxene, I think I said pyroxene. What's correct? I've heard both. So we have black beans. That's kind of pretty. This cup's a little red hot because <laughs> this is magma. Give it a good shake. <laughs> okay, the black beans and the gravel on the bottom, some of the straws are caught in the gravel, but most of the straws are on top. And I yes. think that's because they're lighter. So what you're seeing there is essentially a moon in miniature. At the very bottom, there should be a lot of gravel, right? So that's representative of the olivine, and above that should be the black beans, which are representative yep. of the pyroxene minerals. And okay. then in between that, you have the magma, and above the Got magma, it. you have the straws, which represent the anorthosite crust, which is lightest. So basically, this is your red straw. Yes. I always thought that all anorthosite only came from the moon, but it is here on Earth. There, there are very super. rare deposits here on Earth, yes. That comes from a very special deposit called the Stillwater Layered Mafic Intrusion. These layered mafic intrusions are very rare here on Earth, and we only have a, a few examples of them, and they're very old. They're part of some of the oldest parts of the Earth's crust. NASA has actually done studies to use it for testing lunar equipment because of the, it's so similar in composition. That is so cool. Yeah, so the Stillwater deposit has been used quite a bit because it's very difficult and expensive to go collect moon rocks, but we have our own miniature moon here on Earth because they had very similar formations. That is so, so cool. So Caleb mentioned that this anorthosite is found here on Earth, but what's really cool is anorthosite is actually a type of feldspar, but it's actually a super rare feldspar. More common feldspars that you may be aware of from watching this channel are labradorite, which is by far one of my favorites, and moonstone, which I'm actually wearing today. And if you wanna learn more about other feldspars, you can catch these episodes right here, but open it in a new window, stay for the rest of the episode. And this piece is only found on the moon. The lunar breccia, yes, that has a mineral assemblage that is unique to the moon. Fun fact about the moon rock. 20, maybe 30 years ago, it was a lot harder to find moon rocks because there weren't as many impacts. In the last few years, we've actually had more impacts, so the availability of moon rocks has risen while the price has actually dropped. This moon rock, I was told, is actually from 2019. So, Caleb, my question to you is if one of our viewers was watching and they really wanna have a moon rock in their collection, how would you recommend they go about finding it? There are a lot of meteorite dealers out there that sell moon rocks. They're pretty widely available. The price can vary depending on how recent an impact has had or where that impact was. You should also be aware that when you're looking for a moon rock, that it's a registered moon rock. They're typically things like NWA that signify where the impact was, when it was. There should be classifying information with it so that you don't get just any old rock that somebody is passing off as a moon rock. Can you tell us what an NWA is? It stands for Northwest Africa. It stands for the place it impacted. I want you all to take a closer look at this moon rock. I just think that is so cool that I'm literally holding something that is out of this world. This was an awesome episode today. So thank you everyone for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. And Caleb, thank you for you coming today. I know you're super busy. I know you are, you know, up to your neck and testing gemstones and helping out at JTV. So thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it and I hope we get you back. 
Absolutely, anytime. All right, guys, we hope to see you on next week's episode. In the meantime, maybe go find your own moon rock or comment below and let us know whether you would like to have a moon rock in your collection. I hope you enjoyed today's science experiment and we will catch you next week for some more gemstone and jewelry fun. Thanks for watching.